Hello. So I'm about to, I was about to do a speed painting um, tutorial or video again, and uh, I like it. And I think a lot of people do. And again, like I said uh, yesterday, I'm going to, you know, continuously find new content to try to upload pretty regularly. And um, one piece of content that I think is really nice is commentary um, content. And one thing that I thought would be really fun is kind of commentary on art community stuff and no drama type stuff. Um, I don't really like drama type content, but just like, you know, constructive criticism, um, nothing incredibly negative either. Like I, I think a lot of art content that's online is actually incredibly helpful and supportive and really, you know, inspiring and motivating. Uh, but sometimes I think there's some holes uh, that could be filled with some more, you know, thoughtful advice. Uh, I think a lot of these tutorials and uh, videos that are online on YouTube, uh, they're not consolidated. So when people watch these videos, they, they hear a piece of advice and it's missing a piece of information. And so people will hear it, but then they don't get the full context or they don't have a, a lot of the, they don't have the bigger picture. And so they get a little lost. And so when people take my mentorships or watch my tutorials, they tend to start to realize the gaps that are missing. And I think that's where a lot of value uh, my classes and tutorial tend to have. Uh, I don't think that my classes and tutorials alone are the big picture either. I think you need some of the stuff that you find on YouTube as well. I think it's, you need everything. You need a little bit of everything. And so as I was like, kind of just, you know, just browsing, I stumbled upon this video. And this isn't actually an artist. Um, this is from somebody known as Jordan Peterson. And the video is labeled The Curse of Cre uh, Creativity. And we'll, we'll, we'll watch it together. It's about six and a half minutes long. And it's uploaded, uploaded by another uh, content creator called Word to the Wise. So maybe this is out of context. Um, but I was watching it because I, I typed in art motivation. In fact, let me just switch over so you guys can see what I see. So I typed in art motivation and what I saw is just a bunch of just artists that I did recognize. And uh, let me move my camera so it's a little bit more in frame. And uh, I was like, okay, this one's pretty cool. I, I would watch this one. And I was thinking about some of the videos and there's a lot of content creators that I actually admire. So I was gonna like watch some of their videos and see what they had to say and see if there's anything that, that I would like to add or to include or to maybe, like I said earlier, fill in the gaps. Uh, or put my own spin on it or just compound what they already said. Because sometimes they may say everything that I would say and just say, yep, that's right. I agree. Um, so that way people who are, aren't sure if it's good advice could just get some more affirmation, kind of a meta analysis, if you will. Right. Uh, but then I saw this and I was like, what, what does Jordan Beeserson have to say about creativity? <laughs> you know? Uh, and for those of you who aren't sure who Jordan Peterson is, um, I won't get too much into it. Uh, I have my own opinions about the guy. I've seen him uh, quite a bit. Uh, I watch a lot of politic videos uh, pretty frequently and consistently. And so I can see why he pop would pop up in my algorithm. Um, I'm pretty indifferent. I don't really have a strong opinion either way, meaning that I don't really hate him, nor do I love him. I just don't think much of him. Um, Oh, I thought I muted my phone. Hopefully it doesn't keep going off. And I'll just put it behind my back. <laughs> um, if it goes off pretty irregularly, uh, or regularly, I'll mute it altogether. Um, but I was just kind of like, okay, let me watch this video. So I did watch it. I watched it already. And I was like, oh, man, I have a lot of opinions about what this guy has to say. And so I thought I'll watch it with you guys and then kind of go through it. Um, but like I said, uh, you know, he has a lot of takes that I think are pretty, oh, shoot, let me take this off too, that I think are pretty uh, incredible and intense on a lot of different, you know, political and psychiatric stuff. And I think some stuff, like he actually has some pretty solid and valid points. And some stuff, I think he's just completely off the mark. But I'm not an expert on many of those things. I don't really know much about those types of stuff. So I t typically just keep those opinions to myself and, you know, amongst my close friends you know, whenever we discuss stuff like this. Um, but this is something that I am 
pretty knowledgeable about. Like, I mean, I do this for a living. I am a creative, okay. I'm a creative individual by trade, right? As you guys know, I do concept art by design, uh, a design and use my creative mind pretty consistently and constantly. And I teach people how to be creative and I uh, engage in this pretty frequently for the last better half of a decade I've been teaching people and for over a decade I've been doing it professionally. So when I was listening to this, I was kind of really uh, dumbfounded by some of his perspective. And I felt that it was pretty important to kind of watch this video talk and talk you guys through it because I think it's it's really uh, it's really interesting that he would have such a strong opinion about such things, um, you know, without actually consulting somebody that I think like like myself. I would love to talk with him about it, and I would I think he would probably change his mind. I, I don't think he's uh, a dishonest actor. I think in some instances he might change his perspective. I don't know about nowadays. I think he might have no interest in such a thing. But I know at some point in his career, he was the type of person that would listen, but who knows. But let's let's just jump right in before I spend another 18 hours. I don't want this video to be too long either. <laughs> it's already six minutes in before we even begin. But let's let's just jump right in. So I say, well, everyone's not creative and everybody- Hopefully the audio isn't too bad either. I'm looking at the levels on my other screen and it looks fine. I want you to be able to hear what he says. So we'll see what's up. So I say, well, everyone's not creative and everybody goes, oh, that's terrible. It's like, it's not so terrible. It's not self-evident that you would curse someone with high levels of creativity. Already off on a good start. Curse somebody with high levels of creativity. The great curse of creativity. You know, you hear very frequently people say things like everyone's creative. It's like, that's wrong, okay? It's wrong. It's just as wrong as saying that everyone's extroverted. Um, everyone is creative. I think that, now is everyone extrovert? I think this idea, um, I think that's a little bit different. It's a false comparison. Um, when we were all kids, we were all drawing, singing, dancing. Uh, I think creativity was beaten out of us. You know what I mean? Like, as we went through the public educational system, it only became more and more compounded in that we, we did, like, compounded that we needed to, like, get, like, a job in, like, the three major jobs, right? Something in, like, like a doc, like medicine, like a doctor, uh, an engineer of some sort, and some sort of uh, high, high academic career, including what Jordan Peterson does. And so... But like creative jobs were never like on the table. Does that make sense? Like as soon as you hit like something like um, young adulthood, especially, it was just beaten out of you. Like being being an artist was just not even considered a job. So this idea that we aren't um, creative, uh, not everybody's creative, there's a better way of thinking about this. Um, I think that we were all kind of like at the same level of creativity and, you know, uh, at the same level of artistry. It's just that some people just ignored kind of the social and environmental and all that other stuff that kind of told us no to stop doing that. They just ignored that and they just kept doing the creative and the artistic stuff, uh, even through, you know, uh, higher education and middle school and high school and all that stuff. They just kept on doodling and drawing, even when people were yelling at them and telling them not to, they did it when they were going home, they would do all that stuff instead of, uh, supplementing it through like what people would probably do now through social media, playing video games, watching movies, TV shows. I mean, if there's ever any proof of this, when TikTok came out, I mean, if you, if when TikTok first came out, all these kids on TikTok, I've never seen so much creativity in my goddamn life there's so much hilarious content from all sorts of people and so such amazing types of content from all kinds of people when there is no threshold of like there's nothing there's no barrier of entry so this idea that not everybody is creative is just straight up false it's culture and societal norms that have really compounded this idea that we shouldn't do it we all supplement it we the people that 
don't get access to it all the time, we supplement it. The fact that I draw and paint all the time, I don't, I'm not, I don't play video games as much. I don't necessarily watch lots of TV and movies as much because I, I create my own content constantly. But before then I used to, I used to. And so I think it's, it's a really important thing. But like I said, we're off on a good start. Let's keep watching now. Let's keep listening. First of all, you have to be pretty damn smart to be creative because otherwise you're just gonna get to where other people have already got and that's not creative by definition. So being fast and being out there at the front of things really makes a difference. And then you also have to have these divergent thinking capabilities and that's part of your trait structure. And creative people are really different than non-creative people. You know, partly because, for example, they're highly motivated to do creative things and to experience novelty and to chase down aesthetic experiences and to attend movies and to read fiction and to go to museums and to enjoy poetry and, and to enjoy music that's not conventional music, for example. These aren't trivial differences. And so it's a real misstatement to make the proposition that everyone's creative. It's just simply not the case. It's a matter of wishful thinking. It's like saying that everyone's intelligent. Well, if everyone's intelligent, then the term loses all of its meaning because any term that you can apply to every member of a category has absolutely no meaning. So I think that he is right to say that people that are creative tend to have like these different interests and different, like for instance, he's saying like people who are creative were, will look at things differently. They will like research and seek out things with, you know, with a different eye and a different perspective. But then he, he makes a statement towards the end of what I just stopped of like, you know, it's like, you know, saying there's, um, uh, let me rewind to get exactly what he said. Loses all of its meaning. Well, it's just simply not the case. It's a matter of wishful thinking. It's like saying that everyone's intelligent. Yeah, there you go. It's like saying everyone is intelligent. Now, when we think of creativity and intelligence, right? When we say, it's like saying everyone is intelligent. When we say that, uh, when we use that word, intelligence, we don't claim that not everyone can't be intelligent either, right? Uh, we do think that people can become intelligent if they train towards it. So a lot of what he's implying here is that people who are creative are just creative and people who are intelligent are just intelligent. But what I'm trying to make a real distinction here is that he's not truly implying that you can become creative or you can come, become intelligent. What I'm saying is that um, you are either you either learn to become creative or you either learn to become intelligent based off of just what happens in the beginning. Now, are there factors that make someone a little bit more intelligent or a little bit more creative because of some sort of genetic advantage? Of course. For instance, Kobe Bryant is taller than me, right? So that's why he'll have an advantage in a game like basketball. But the reason Kobe Bryant is better at basketball than me is not because he's taller. This is a really important thing to be, to say to, to, to me that Kobe Bryant or any of the, the, the best basketball players in the game are good at basketball because they're tall, right? Like that's what I'm hearing. Like, oh, because they're intelligent or they're creative. That's just like a, that's not how I see it. That is just a subtle advantage. But what really makes the difference is the consistent training and practice. What makes Jordan Peterson intelligent what made him get to where he's at now is a consistent effort that led him to his uh path and career so just as much as it would take someone to be as creative like so for all the things that a creative person does like if i like why do i look at all this cool and interesting stuff and outside of the box stuff because i have trained myself to i used to i i never did that before but as i became more and more uh, adept at training my creativity, I began to, I realized I have to, for instance, I, I don't go to art station exclusively. I teach this to my students. I say, stop going to art station only because art station has like one brand of art style. I'd say, go to Pinterest, look at, um, you know, look at like stuff has nothing to do with concept art. Look at architecture, look at food. I teach my students this, but not because I think, well, are you creative though? I'm teaching them how to be creative. Like I'm telling them this is how you engage that. I'm you're you're feeding your mind a new diet of imagery and ideas and culture. 
And so this idea of like, because you'll wait till the end and he throws a lot of like big words and terminology and he, he articulates his, his terms very well. So it sounds like he knows what he's talking about, but he's making it seem like there's a difference of between people who are creative and not creative. Just like I would say there's a difference between somebody who trains for the marathon, who's someone who doesn't train for the marathon. One person trains, one person doesn't. That's the difference. It's not like the person who trains for the marathon is just good at running at marathons. And then the person who doesn't train isn't good at marathons. There's a very clear difference there and that's the training. And what I'm trying to make clear here, what I think is really, really devastating about this kind of, this video is like, it makes it seem like there's nothing in between. Like if I, like my, like my skill is because I'm a creative person, guys. I'm just a creative person. Sorry, guys. Tough luck. Oh, I'm an intelligent person, guys. Sorry. Tough luck. You know, if you look at all of the greatest minds and talents uh, in, the, in the universe, ever that existed, you can always trail back to a system of, of behaviors and environmental uh, situation that led up to their success. It is almost almost every single person. There is no coincidence. Very rarely do you have these savants that are just everything um, uh, about them was just about their genetics, right? Very, very rarely. Um, even the greatest people that we think of, like that changed the history of mankind, had a very, very average life and just happened to have just the right circumstances when it came to their environment and the right circumstances to their work ethic. And then all of a sudden they became pretty extraordinary. And what I like about that is that that's a lot of you guys, people who are listening to this video now. There are people who have uh, unfortunate circumstances that might not have access to this video and they may never know this and that is unfortunate. But but to just chop it up to you're either creative or you're not, that is that is way too it's simplistic. It is, it is inc incredibly naive from my perspective. But let's keep watching. Well, if everyone's intelligent, then the term loses all of its meaning because any term that you can apply to every member of a category has absolutely no meaning. Now, and you know, the other thing you want to be thinking about here is that don't be thinking that creativity is such a good thing. It's a high risk, high return strategy. So if you're creative, you just try this. There's creative people in this room, man. You guys are going to have a hell of a time monetizing your creativity. It's virtually impossible. It's really, really difficult because first of all, let's say you make an original product. You think the world will beat a pathway to your door if you build a better mousetrap. It's like, that's complete rubbish. It isn't true in the least. If you make a good creative product, you've probably solved about 5% of your problem. Because then you have marketing, which is insanely difficult, and then you have sales, and then you have customer support, and sales. Let's listen to that again. The world will beat a pack and original. It's really, really difficult activity. It's virtually a creative people in this room, man. You guys are gonna have a hell of a time monetizing your creativity. It's virtually impossible. It's really, really difficult because, first of all, let's say you make an original product, you think, the world will beat a pathway to your door if you build a better mousetrap. It's like, that's complete rubbish. It isn't true in the least. If you make a good creative product, you've probably solved about 5% of your problem. Because then you have marketing, which is insanely difficult, and then you have sales, and then you have customer support, and then you have to build an organization. So <clears throat> he's not wrong about the aspect that it's hard to monetize your creativity. This is this is true for everything. It's hard to make money doing anything. I mean, <laughs> okay, what's your point? Um, so, so just because it is hard um, doesn't mean it's not worth pursuing. That's always been kind of my model. But like, here's here's the thing where I think he's wrong about. It's not virtually impossible. One of the most lucrative um, one of the most lucrative, uh, industries is in with like within the creative arts, right? Movies, video games, TV shows, social network is, is basically thrived off of creative enterprise, you know, like people's thoughts and people's expressions 
all of these things are thrived on content. Okay. Um, YouTubers are just constantly trying to come up with content, you know, and I guess the way I think he's trying to market his argument is around the idea of like the, 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 the big million dollar ideas. And I would say to him that that is absolutely true. That is like a lottery ticket. That is. Okay. If you're trying to be like the hundred million, ten to million dollar idea, then absolutely because that is I mean that that's the one percent. And as the, they're the one percent for the for that reason. You know, they're they're one percent for a reason. It's only one percent of the world population that can get there. And getting into the billions is like point like one percent of that percentage, right? So it's that is statistically just true. It's very realistic to look at that that way. But to be able to make a lucrative business and to sustain your lifestyle, like a, a reasonable lifestyle, if you want to just live within your means, live a modest and humble life, you can totally make money off of your creative arts. Uh, I teach this all the time to my students. I teach it very pragmatically. I teach it very realistically. I say, listen, you got to understand there's only two things you have control over. It is the quality of your work and the consistency, uh, the consistency of how often you share it. If you do these two things in time, you will build an audience that will want, um, something of your work, whether that's a, you know, video game company that wants to work with you, or maybe you are a person who sells tutorials like myself or both you do tutorials and you work in industry, or maybe you make art that just people like, and they want to buy prints of. I know plenty of people who all they do is make their own content. There are many ways, but you have to build an audience. Uh, one of my good friends, for instance, Ross Tran, when I first met him, he had less followers than I do. I think he had like 10,000 followers when he first started going, he really started really aggressively and he got a lot of followers just with all the energy but not as many as me, you know, and he reached out to me. He said, Hey, you know, I would love to collab. And I was like, yeah, of course, I'm always happy to work with other young artists, especially with that energy that he had. And I, I loved his energy. I liked what he was doing. I could see he was a shining star. I went and been a part of many of his videos and now he's like rocket past me. He's like got 1.5 million followers and he just keeps expanding and keeps growing. And he's still the same nice guy that I knew when I first met him, you know, um, I just saw him last month, you know, and it is all he does is consistently post quality content. There's nothing, there's nothing tricky about it. It is hard to do, right? It's hard to make good work and it's hard to do it consistently, but it's, it's very simple, but like, uh, what he's about to get into next, I'll talk to you about soon, but like really what I'm trying to get at is he, he's just making it seem like it's this impossible thing. And I'm not sure what the strategy here is. <laughs> I don't know what his argument is. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I would love to talk to him. I'm sure he would be better about it with an actual dialogue with somebody that's truly creative and has a more thoughtful understanding of what it is to be a creative person. Um, who's not so artsy fartsy, you know what I mean? There's a lot of creatives. Like, I understand they're like a little bit more artsy about it. I'm very, um, uh, methodical. And so I think to me, uh, one of the things that I, I, I really like to try to tell people when it comes to creative arts is that, that it is hard to do. I'm not trying to make any illusions that it is hard, easy to get good at, you know, art and design and all that stuff. But I am also saying that it is within reason uh, and that it's within many of the people who know about it. Like, I don't know too many people who cannot, like I've met many, many people and the, the types of people that are looking this up, right? The types of people that are looking up like art motivation and creative motivation and stuff like that, um, they are in this boat, they want to learn. And so when they see a video like this, this could be very demoralizing. So I hopefully, hopefully they find my video and they're like, oh shit, okay, great. You know, and get back on track. And if it's really novel, you have to tell people what the hell the thing is. 
No one knows what that is, and that's a real problem. If you write a book, well, then you have the problem that another million people have also written a book. But if you produce something that's completely new and doesn't have a category, people can't search for it online. How are they going to find it? And then you have pricing problems. And All of this, actually, by the way, is good advice. Because now he's talking about something completely different than creativity. This, to me, is just like, like business stuff, like how to market, how to like run a business. But he... But he's talking about the curse of creativity, but he's talking about a whole different skill. And so, um, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with- It's really- I'm okay with the idea that like a creative person may not have the ability to understand business skill. And I can tell you from experience, I'm not as good at the business stuff as I would like to be. But like, but that's, that's a whole different argument, you know? So I think a lot of what he's about to say next is actually reasonable unbelievably difficult to produce something creative and then monetize it and even worse if you're the creative person let's say you have a spectacular invention you've got no money right you've got no customers Th those are big problems and so maybe you go and you find a venture capitalist we start with family and friends because that's how it works you raise money for your product you raise money from your family and friends that's assuming you have family and friends that have some money and that they're going to give it to you and most people aren't in that situation so it's a terrible barrier right off the bat and then, of course, you're putting your family and friends at substantial financial risk because the probability that your stupid idea is going to make money is virtually zero, even if it's a really brilliant idea. And so then let's say, well, you get past family and friends and you get venture capitalists involved because that's often the next step. There's steps in building a business. Family and friends, angel investor, that's some rich guy that you've happened to meet, some man or in some way who's, who's into this sort of thing. This stuff is not necessarily true, but you do need some sort of like some way to kind of like build a business yeah but uh i think nowadays you can do it i know like again i'm not sure the context of this video because it looks like it's back when he was used to be like a teacher which was many moons ago and a lot has happened since then you know what i mean there's a lot of new ways to make money on the internet so back when he said this could have been reasonable to give that kind of advice but nowadays you can do, there's all sorts of ways to do it without having to go through family and friends and venture capitalists, but still, it's still reasonable. And is willing to provide you with some money to get your product off the ground. Well, how much of your product is that person going to take? Well, most of it, most of it. And no wonder because, you know, you don't have any money. How are you going to bargain for? Again, uh, the middleman stuff is less and less a problem these days control over your product. He'll just say, well, do you want the money or not? And if your answer is no, then he'll go and do something else with his money. It's not like there's no shortage of things that you can do with your money. There's a million things you can do with it. So you're not in a great bargaining position. And then if you get venture capitalists involved, they'll take another big chunk. And maybe if they're not very straight with you, they'll just throw you out. Because maybe by that point in the company's development, you're nothing but a pain in the neck. Because what do you know about marketing and sales and customer service and building an organization and running a business? Like, you don't have a clue. So why do they need you? So even if you're successful at generating a new idea and you put it into a business, the probability that you, as the originator of the idea, are going to make some money from it is very, very low. So don't be thinking that creativity is such a, is something you would want to curse yourself with. Now, so, so he, he, he talks about there's the difference between creative people and non-creative people, but then he, he goes on for like about a minute and a half about how creative people's ideas can't make money and that's the curse. And I think that that's, that whole argument is just not, not, not a good one. And I guess the whole the whole point around that, that is that like, if people that are creative are just destined to just, you know, be working nine to fives and practical types, types of jobs or academic type jobs, I guess, or something that's more um, pragmatic, then we would live in a world with very little art and culture. Uh, I live in Central America now, and even out here where, you know, there isn't like a large media presence, there is tons of culture and art. I mean, people 
make a living selling pottery and jewelry and all that stuff. Like, I mean, of course they're not <laughs> selling Marvel movies and making billion dollar franchises and stuff and amusement parks, but this it's a smaller scale. It's a smaller version of, of just creative stuff. And I buy stuff from them all the time. Uh, my wife bought this for me the other day and I use it to hold my pens, you know? So Nicaragua, this has my name on there. It's a little cowboy boot. Uh, I got cowboy hat, you guys saw the other day. I got some boots. Um, this is this is art stuff, you know? Oh, the furniture, this is this bed was done by a carpenter that we, we lo like we love them, like we know them personally. It's all artistically created. Like they designed it and created it themselves. You know what I mean? Um, the little uh, dog house that we got built for the dogs. It's just the carpenters, they built it. And so it's kind of like, like we've been drawing paintings on cave walls since the beginning of time. And like humans, I think, the reason we have got it out of the caves is because of our creativity. We are creative creatures. That's just what we are. And to kind of chop it up to, you're not gonna make any money from it as the defining feature of like the curse of creativity. Uh, I don't think it's enough of a context. I don't think he gave us enough of a big picture. It would be a healthier argument to be like, listen, and this is one that I always try to give, um, to be like, Hey, you know, if you're chasing the idea of like, you're going to be like the next James Cameron or like the next, like the big hitters, uh, that's probably unlikely that like, there's not too many people that can do that. But if you're just trying to be like a concept artist or you want to work on like the cool TV show and stuff, there's, there's more opportunity for that than you might suspect. Or if you just want to like make really cool art and sell your own original artwork, then that's a lot harder, but you have to build an audience that would want to also like it. That's very niche, but you can do it. I know plenty of people who do that too, okay? There are all sorts of ways you can do it. There's really, there's all sorts of ways. Like I know a guy actually locally here who sells artwork and all he does stuff is he just draws stuff in Sharpie of just like beautiful nature stuff and everything in Sharpie. And it's, it's awesome, you know? And it's his own original artwork and he sells it and that's what he does and he lives a very, modest life and he, all you need to do is sell one or two of these pieces of artwork a month and he can live a simple life out here in Nicaragua. He doesn't need to sell hundreds of these, you know what I mean? Like he doesn't need to make that Marvel money. And so I think a lot of times this idea of like, you got to go all in, it's just crazy. And so I think it's, it's very reasonable. There's a, there's a YouTube channel that I follow. It's called stylized station. And this, this YouTube channel is really great because they talk about very practical and reasonable ways to make money as a stylized artist. And I, like I said, I was thinking about commentary on other YouTube channels and stuff, and they're one of them. And I think they're the, the types of YouTube channels. That I'm going to be like, this is a good YouTube channel. You should watch them and you should engage in their YouTube content, even if you're not into stylized artwork, just because they give a lot of great advice. Um, but this is not good advice. This is just like, he's just, I feel like he wants to be a creative person and he's just like venting about how you can't either you are, or you're not. And he's just like, he's kind of projecting a bit. You know, it's not all bad because it, it opens up avenues of experience for creative people that aren't available to people who aren't creative. But it definitely is a high risk, high return strategy. You See, know, high risk, high return. It's just that's not how it is, dude. I chose to do it and I ended up doing it. It wasn't that high. And I've taught a lot of students and many of my students ended up getting careers. Uh, I have a high retention rate. It, it's not as bad as you think. Um, I realized so the, the video is getting really long. overwhelming probability is that you will fail. But a okay, overwhelming possibility is you will fail. Listen, the only way you will fail in doing a creative in, uh, venture is if you're trying to be the next James Cameron. If you're just trying to be, let's say, an illustrator, you will not fail. As long as you draw consistently and constantly 
and you put your artwork out there and you reach a high quality bar, which I promise you, if you do, if you draw and practice and study consistently and constantly, you will get good. It is inevitable. And if you put it out there, people will find you. There are, there are people that are constantly looking for great artists, constantly. You will be found, okay? It's, it just will happen. Uh, and you will make a career. And so it is not high risk. It's not high reward. Okay. There's something he says later that I will say that is actually not bad advice. Something I actually tell people to do too, but this whole, like you will completely fail. It's crazy. Small proportion of creative people succeed spectacularly. Yeah. See, he's going like, it's like all or nothing. It's, it's intense, man. And so it's like a lottery in some sense, you're probably going to lose, but if you don't lose, you could win big. And that keeps a lot of creative people going. No, I, you know, I got the scratcher and I just got 20 bucks. But also they don't really have much choice in it because if you're a creative person, you're like a fruit tree that's bearing fruit. You can suppress it, but it's very bad for you. You know, the creative people I've worked with is if they're not creative, they're miserable. So they have to do it. You know, there's real joy and, and pleasure in it. And, and so yeah, again, I think everybody enjoys being creative and I think everybody is creative and if they if they don't do creative stuff themselves, then they they act, absolutely seek it out elsewhere, whether it's from movies, video games, TV shows, um, social media content, YouTube videos, like whatever it may be, playing music, dancing to it, whatever it may be, any kind of hobby, they, they seek it out, right? They seek it out. They seek out some sort of, some sort of thing, right? Whether it's spiritual, whether it's, you know, cerebral they seek out that connection to their inner mind because it's built into us and if you're not actively engaging in that you're you're constantly in this loop of like frustration and this is not just creative people i think this is everybody everybody should have a hobby everybody should have something that's creative everybody um so this is just not good advice. This whole like, you're either creative or you're not. Psychological utility, but it's certainly not a conservative strategy for moving forward through life. And you know, whenever I talk to people who are creative and you, you guys should listen to this because I know- He isn't talking to me. What I'm talking about. If you happen to be creative, if you're a songwriter or another kind of musician or an artist or any of the other number of things that you might be, find a way to make money and then practice your craft on the side. So this is not bad advice because it's hard to get good at anything, including concept art. So I had a friend who, you know, was working as a car salesman for like two years, as well as going to school, learning how to become a 3D modeler for two years. So it's, it makes practical sense to make money while you're trying to learn your craft. And this goes for almost anything. Um, for me, I took financial aid when I went to school, but then I dropped out because I just immediately realized that the school that I was going to was a complete sham. But even before then, I worked regular jobs. I, I used to be a, a plumber apprentice. I worked at retail stores. I worked at truck stops uh, as a cleaner. I worked at as like a... Um, a uh, a beer merchandiser. I, I did all sorts of regular jobs too. So I know what it was like to work, work, you know? So I understood the contrast between what I was working towards versus what I did before. So I understand this idea of you got to make money, you know, somehow in this world that we live in. And so that's obviously, you can't just be like, oh, da, 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 I'm just going to draw and not pay my bills. Of course, you got to do something in between. I tend, I tell, try to tell people do something that's actually not a creative job. Like, let's say if you want to, like some people, I'll, I'll do like graphic design or something. Like, let's say, like, don't do a creative job. That's not the job you want to do. For instance, if you want to be a character concept artist, don't do graphic design. Do if, if you want to be a character, uh, concept artist, then do character concepts. Don't do graphic design. Don't do illustration don't do anything else like as a as like a side job you should try to focus uh on the character concept stuff until you get really good at it and 
until you start getting jobs for that. Uh, if you get jobs that come around and you, you feel like that's the only kind of job you can get, then of course take that job. But what I'm trying to say is that you can get creatively exhausted. So if you're spending all your day doing graphic designs, like you do eight hours of that and then the day's over, you can get exhausted and you you will feel like you don't want to do anything creative anymore. And that sucks if you're trying to train your creative skills in character design. That's what I mean. But if you're like working all day, like, you know, folding clothes at the gap and you're done, you'll just be like exhausted, exhausted, but maybe not creatively. So you'll be like, all right, time to draw. You might actually feel excited because it's like your thing that you love to do, you know? But anyway because you will starve to death otherwise. Now, for some of you, that won't be true, but it's a tiny minority. Your best bet is to find a job that will keep body and soul together and parse off some time that you can pursue your creative yeah. thing, because then, well... Yeah, good advice. Well, as a long-term strategy, a medium to long-term strategy, it's a better one. But it's got incredibly difficult for people, musicians, for example, it's incredibly difficult for new musicians to monetize their craft, even if they're really, really good at it. Lecture 19 from lecture 19. Maybe I should watch this whole thing. It's 2017. So all the stuff I said about like the venture capitalist stuff. Now, nah, I think the timeline in which he said that was not accurate either, but it's okay. It's fine. Um, like I said, I, there's, there are some things to be fair to, uh, Jordan Peterson. There are some opinions that he has that I actually, um, I've heard him say, like, he said some things about like, you know, just like personal accountability and stuff. Like when it comes to like being accountable and like self, like, like a lot of what I'm hearing him say right now kind of stems from that. You know what I mean? Like I can tell it stems from that, but I think he's gotten a little full tilt. There's, there's a bit of like that self accountability messaging that I hear from a lot of motivational speakers that goes a little too full tilt. That's like, it's like all or nothing type of vibe. And I've, I've kind of unsubscribed to that mentality because really people need to be way more empathetic <laughs> to one another. And we got to just chill. Like we have so much, we only have so much time on this planet and everybody needs to just fucking relax for a bit. And that there's more to life than this like hustle, cult, cult, like this hustle culture. Like we're just like, go, 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 go. And, um, you know, you can train in this craft like several hours a day, like, I'm oh, sorry, like four or five hours a day. And that's more than enough time to really get good at a skill. Spend a few hours in the morning, a few hours at night. And that's, that's enough. You don't have to go 18 hour days grinding. There, there is diminishing returns. Um, but what I will say is that like, when I watched this video, I was just kind of, I was totally triggered. I was just like, whoa, dude, like everything you're saying here is like, I can hear somebody will, it's kind of like a horoscope, right? Like you either will project that I am a creative person or I'm a not a creative person. And the way that I, I, I feel about that is the same way the, I explained earlier about like you, it's like comparing a, a trained marathon athlete versus a untrained marathon athlete. And the comparison and the difference is specifically the training, right? It's not like a God given difference. It's that one person has trained and one person has not trained. That is the difference. I wouldn't be like, oh, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not a marathon runner. Like you're a marathon runner. Like it's just a weird way of thinking about it. But for whatever reason, when it comes to cerebral stuff, like mental stuff, people get caught up in like, uh, uh, either you're creative, or you're not creative, you're talented or you're not talented. Listen, like I said earlier, there are some people that might have a capacity to learn faster or maybe uh, have ability to see things differently, have a better observational skill. Like these things are true, of course. Like I, I'm darker in skin, right? So I have a, an ability to basically, you know, lack vitamin D faster. I need more vitamin D than your average bear. I have to go outside more often, otherwise I'll lack vitamin D. That's just like genetically, I'm genetically disposed to this, but, but that doesn't mean that I'm like that much different than the next person who's lighter skinned than me. You know what I mean? Like I'm not all of a sudden a mutant compared to them. And what I'm trying to get at is that there are some differences and what really makes th those big differences 
in the larger scale is the the repetitive behavior it's not the it's not like the the day to day it's the yearly comparison right because my vitamin d deficiency isn't as comparative uh the day to day as it would be over my uh negligence to the sun over years right and so what i'm trying to say is like I've been drawing and been consistently practicing this art skill for, for many, many years now. And the reason why I'm better than most is because of this specifically. It's not because I'm a creative person. It's because I am a trained artist. Like I would say I'm a trained marathon runner. Like I used that example earlier. So if you aren't good creatively, for someone who's listening to this video, happen chance that might think they're not creative. It is not because you aren't a creative person It's because you aren't trained creatively. You can get just as good as I can. I promise you that. Uh, if you were to see some of my earlier drawings, um, you would know that you can do it. I promise. And, and what's funny to me is that this is my greatest critique of Jordan is that he consistently would do this. He'll get into other disciplines that I know he knows really nothing about uh, and have like a strong opinion about <laughs> And I don't know why. I'm like, bro, stick in your own lane, man. And uh, speak to it as if he is, is gospel. Now, granted, I don't think he's out here preaching this. Um, and it is again, it is probably out of context. So I want to be very upfront. I don't want to make, I want to be very, very honest here. Um, I just, it's just, there's no, uh, no, like, Hey, this is my opinion, by the way. <laughs> hey, he's none of that in front of this. Cause if he would have said that, then maybe I was like, Oh, I don't have that. I don't want to say anything to this. Um, but there's just this idea because he's, um, a clinical psychiatrist. I believe that's what he is. If I'm wrong about that, I'm sorry. Um, because of psychiatry, when people think of that, they think, oh, well, creativity is, involves the mind, psychiatry, mind. So he must be an expert about creativity too. Just like a doctor, you know, a p pediatric doctor is different than a cardiac uh, or, yeah, person that's a doctor of the heart <laughs> or versus a neurosurgeon versus a endocrinologist versus a ENT doctor. Just because they're a doctor doesn't mean they know all of the different medicines. I... I've seen all sorts of different doctors for all of my different ailments. I know because I've been seeing doctors for many years now, right? I remember I went to the ENT doctors like, "Hey, you know, what do you think?" He's like, "I literally know nothing about the spine." <laughs> and I was like, "My bad." Um and so um you know, just because he has some understanding of the general knowledge of the brain doesn't mean he understands all of the factors. And I am no by no means a doctor of the brain but I am a pretty profound uh, expert when it comes to generating creative content, you know, uh, consistently, especially when it comes to character designs, especially when it comes to creatures and um, monsters and characters, uh, pretty consistently and successfully. And so uh, I think for anyone who may have been questioning their creative abilities, and, and this is something I, I tell you, I do all the time in my mentorships. I teach people like that they can learn this because a lot of times they feel like they can't and i teach them and i i really help them um you know with their mentality and their philosophy around this because a lot of times they get they really beat themselves up and they take it personal and it's it's a hard pill to swallow and it's what i spend a lot of time in my classes talking to students with this specifically, this like this like internal like per persecution that students have and artists have with themselves, with themselves. Um, and I know a lot of people might look up to this guy and they hear him say something like this and they might believe it. So I want to just be clear: uh, this is not the best pieces of advice. And uh, if, if for whatever reason you hear this and you think, "Oh, thank God, great," uh, I'm happy to give that. Uh, if you disagree, that's fine too. I'm just saying that I think it's important that, you know, you really understand that 
creative uh, creativity is a skill. It is something that can be learned, something that can be earned. Okay. And that I genuinely believe that the majority of us have had our creativity beaten out of us as kids, because when we were all kids, we were doing it. We were singing and dancing, and making all kinds of cool stuff. I know this because I've been in classes with my kids, seeing all sorts of kids, and it's indistinguishable, the creativeness amongst all of the kids. I see kids doing all sorts of creative stuff all the time, right? And coming up with some interesting stuff. I see my son do it. I see my daughter do it. I see their friends do it. Like I, I would not know the difference, but as they get older, I can see my daughter starting to stick with the creative stuff. And my son started to let it go more, you know, it's just how it's becoming. Now, whether that's because he's a creative person or not a creative person, she is, it's just probably the interests. He's just not as interested. He likes stuff that's a little more logical. He's more in, into like the math of stuff, you know? And so it is what it is. You're allowed to be interested in different stuff. But even in the maths and like, let's say programming, you can be creative within programming. You'd be surprised how much creativity comes into play with programming as well. Anyway, I'm um, already ranted. It's almost an hour long video. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but this is a great test because now I know if I see an hour long video that I'm going to do commentary on, I'm going to have to break it up <laughs> into parts because I do not want to edit these videos because uh, it saves me time and effort. I just want to record them, upload them, and move on with my life. <laughs> <laughs> all right hope you guys got some enjoyment out of this i might uh I, st I might still do my speed paint video later tonight because i still want to do it because i want to i want to still practice my painting um and i want to record it so you guys can at least see it uh there were some suggestions that people su suggested in the comments um and again in the link below uh, i'll try to add any kind of charity you guys want to uh donate any kind of money to the charities below feel free to uh, and yeah, uh, till next time guys. Cheers.